Welcome back to Homeschool Life. I'm Paula and one of the things that I love about homeschooling is the community. And that's what we're here for is to provide for you a, a conversation so that you can learn and grow and share and be encouraged. From curriculum and how-tos to tips and tricks to day-to-day -day lifestyles and more. So take a second and subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you can keep up to date with all of our new content. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about unschooling teaching style. Now, this is also called relaxed teaching, organic, real life, natural, self-directed, and child-led. And I'm sure there's a few other names as well. So for purposes of our talk, I'm just gonna call it unschooling. All right, so unschooling is quite different from the other methods that we have talked about in that it is very much child-led. Okay, this is kind of how um, people used to learn a long time ago, and it was repopularized starting in the mid-1970s and a lot in the 1990s as well. And it's becoming very, very popular today. So what is this thing called unschooling? Well, first let me tell you what it is not, okay? So it is not having your children just running around wild and crazy and not learning, okay? and it is not them doing everything totally on their own. Now, there is a big range, okay? So there is total unschooling where, no kidding, you just make sure your kids are learning something on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe during set times. You can still have a schedule for lunch or breaks, but you just make sure that they're always learning. And then there is more of uh, what is called, uh, referred to as relaxed learning. And so that is more 50-50. So it's kind of them doing their own thing, but then 50% you're bringing in books and you're bringing in certain um, maybe curriculum for certain subjects like math or science. And so you're teaching them half of the time. So it's very much led by your child's interests throughout this whole entire range, okay? And so it is not following a schedule that is given by a, say, public school, okay? It is not grade level. It is not um, uh, specific to you have to learn this at a certain age, all right? So you're following your child's interests. Um, so this makes it more exciting for them. Um, they, there's very much a focus on um, letting them learn naturally through their own curiosity, through experimenting, through experiences, um, through reading a lot and giving them good quality materials to read from. Um, it is one day they discover a butterfly outside and so now they're on a tangent to learn anything and everything they can about butterflies. And you can even turn this easily into a unit study and and bring in math and bring in art and bring in language arts into that as well. So it is um, a kind of a complex range and it is not for everybody, but it is for some people. I really, really wanted to try unschooling. Um, we knew several families that were doing it um, when we lived in Iowa and it just looked so fun and so appealing. But back then my type A personality was really strong and I had some mentors who um, advised me not to go that way because they figured I would drive myself crazy as well as my kids. And so we did not do that. But however, we got to participate in some of the things that the unschoolers were doing um, that benefited my kids' education as well. And I'll get, get to that more in a little bit. So with unschooling, um, you're going to be there and you're going to be involved and you're going to be um, so you're going to be researching things. You're going to be providing supplies. You're going to be answering questions. You're going to guide and lead them as they're asking questions um, to like what specifically might answer those questions as they study that thing. Um, you're the one that's going to be able to connect some of those dots to say, oh, well, this would go really well with that that you're really interested in right now so that there's more of a, a weave there. Unschoolers are very known for um, very self-independent, uh, self-paced learning, um, and they are some of the smartest people that you will ever meet. Um, they will... Uh, carry this on into adulthood, um, owning their own businesses, um, helping others. Um, they are, are very um, self-directed. 
And so, and, and confident. They build a lot of confidence because they get to learn what they want, kind of when they want, and almost how they want, um, depending on where you're at in the range. Okay, so um, you're not going to specifically teach from things like these, um, except if you want to, or your child wants to. Um, you may have one child who is very much into books and textbooks and things, and that's perfectly fine. You can still unschool and, and do that. Um, but you may have another child who just does not like reading at all. So then you're gonna look more for like videos and hands-on um, experiences for them. Um, you're gonna go out in nature a lot and you're gonna let them just learn from observing things. Um, they can learn a lot of science and math and art and all kinds of things through that. All right, you're going to um, take them on lots of field trips, um, museums and zoos and theaters and things like that. And unit studies are very popular with unschoolers. Um, so you're going to be disciplining them and teaching them respect and responsibility and positive character traits and healthy habits. Um, so when you unschool, it is so easy to tailor your child's education to their learning style because you just follow their lead. And so again, if you have a child who is very um, kinesthetic, so they need to be hands-on using all those senses, you can help them with that. Um, if you've got a child who's very much into reading, then get them a few um, textbooks and, and get them living books, lots and lots of living books that they can learn from as well. So um, it's very interest driven, and so there's more of a high excitement factor. Um, but I will tell you, knowing the unschooler friends that we have, um, it's not all super happy and fun all the time because they still have to do school on days that they don't want to. Um, there is lots of hands-on um, activities that um, occur and um, you're engaging their, their hearts and their minds as well as spending time. Um, unschoolers spend a lot of time as a family and it could be the whole family is in the same room and maybe each child is learning independently at that time but then there's gonna be other times that they're gonna come together. All right, so your children are going to develop into being very independent, self-reliant and critical thinkers. All right, they are going to get to become experts in different areas. So for instance, we had some friends and they had um, three girls and the girls all became interested in, I think it started with one and then the other two gradually, um, interested in learning how to create and make their own jewelry, as well as they all wanted to learn how to draw and how to paint. And so they started learning and um, over time, you know, they were researching, they were experimenting, they were experiencing doing it, and they were learning from their mistakes. And over time, they got really, really good at this. So that led to other people seeing their work, they're wearing their jewelry, they're, you know, having their paintings or their drawings out. And other people are saying like, hey, you know, can you teach my child that? Or um, the kids themselves, their friends were saying, hey, can you teach me? Can I come over when you're making jewelry the next time? So the next thing you know, they started teaching classes. And then my kids went and they were in those classes as well. And so then over time, they decided, hey, maybe we could make some money off of this. And so, not off of this, make some money doing this. And so they started um, studying and researching and their mom just got them the materials and directed them. So they did their own research and they learned how to start their own business, all the aspects of the business, and they started selling their jewelry. And to this day, they still have a successful business. So that is just one example of where your children can get so deep and become experts in a particular subject that they start studying just out of curiosity or for fun, and then it becomes into an actual career. All right, so let's talk a little bit about curricula. And for you really, you know, hardcore unschoolers who have been looking at these books going, what is all of that? Um, I'm gonna talk about that now. So let's talk about curriculum that you might use or sources and resources that you might use as part of your unschooling slash relaxed schooling. <clears throat> Again, you can use this for all or just one subject or anything in between. The nice thing about unschooling is it's very flexible. So let's go over here, let's talk about math for a minute. All right, so maybe you might wanna use something like the Times Tells, this is like a game show theme. 
and this has a DVD in it. Um, Life of Fred, which is very living book storybook for your math. Or you might want to be more traditional with one or two of your subjects like math. So we've got Singapore math or math mammoth and good old Saxon math as well. All right, so those are some examples for math. State history, when you're getting ready to teach your child about your state history, besides taking to them to your state museum and letting them do some research online, you could get something like uh, this is, I just grabbed Oklahoma history and the light of the cross. Um, here is my state history fun book. And this one is for Missouri. Um, here is 50 states under God. Um, and then here is a two piece set South Carolina state history. So that is an example of state histories. Now how about regular history? Um, maybe you just want to give your child a book like this that's sort of like a, an encyclopedia and just let them read and learn and, and pick up and find out what particular part of history is really, really interesting to them and then help guide and lead them towards learning more about that. You could also grab some more living books. So living books are books that are like either written firsthand or they're written in a storybook form so that your child gets to read it but still learn from it. Um, here is the Signers of the Constitution, um, the Star Spangled Banner, and the American Flag. Um, you've got a high schooler. Here is The Federalist. This is quite a hefty book here. But again, they're going to read first person for themselves, which is exactly how, like think back to like George Washington and even before, like they sat and they did a lot of reading. Or a storybook form, uh, Rush Revere and the American Revolution or video and workbook, uh, drive through American history. Okay, let's see for handwriting. Um, you might just pick up some pads like this. This is Chani's uh, My First Letters and Easy Peasy Cursive Workbook. And so just let your child learn how to write neatly using something like this. Um, art. You might want to start with something like Draw Right Now, and each book has a different theme. This one is Animals and Habitats on Land, Ponds and Rivers and Oceans, um, or Artistic Pursuits. Um, this is uh, grades K through 3, Art of the Impressionists. Maybe your child is interested in learning a second language. So you could pick up something for them like um, Song School Spanish. So this is a book, CD, and DVD set. So they're getting visual as well as uh, audio. Or uh, bilingual books, German in 10 minutes a day. So there are lots and lots of different resources for you out there to help your child to learn a different language. All right, so let's move over here. I mentioned about unit studies being really popular. Some really good ones are Progeny Press. And so I have grabbed the book and the workbook. So we've got Sam the Minuteman, and this I just grabbed to cover all different grades, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and the screw tape letters. And so you give your child something like this. Again, you're gonna do the research and you're gonna find different sources for them. Um, more living books. Farmer Boy, and maybe from Farmer Boy they read this and they become very interested in agriculture or history or uh, science out of Farmer Boy. Um, Stories of the Pilgrim, this is another living book. This is um, a history, American history, but it's written storybook style, so it's more exciting and alive for them. Uh, biographies, your children can learn lots and lots through just reading about different people, which can then segue again into other subjects as well. Um, so I've grabbed Davy Crockett and Jim Elliott and Ronald Reagan. Science, they can do something such as Sassafras Science Adventures, uh, volume one, this is zoology. And so this is written again, storybook form. They're just gonna read and learn along with these kids in this book. And then if you wanted, you could or could not, add on the teacher elements in the student workbook and the um, experiments workbook. Then you could also just do some videos. Here is our created moon and created cosmos. 
documentaries and movies are other sources as well. Um, get them this ocean book where they can just look through again. It's almost encyclopedia style, but it's just about the one topic. And here is the weather book. Lots of cool pictures. So that's an idea of what you could do for those particular subjects. So what about resources for yourself? Okay, um, this is a new one that we have, The Call of the Wild and the Free. Um, this is very much the unschooling side of it. And so you could look at that. You could uh, give your high school or maybe a mature junior higher, um, Tim Tebow's book, Know Who You Are, Live Like It Matters. And then back for you, Teaching from Rest, The Brave Learner, Homeschool Bravely, The Everything Guide to Homeschooling, which talks, has a section about homeschooling and can give you ideas for other resources as well. Now, how do you track all of your children's achievements so that maybe you live in a state that you need to uh, put together a portfolio or you need to have proof of what they are doing? So you could get the homeschoolers journal. And so just have them like a journal. They write down, there's a section for field trips. Uh, here's a section for all of the books. Here's, um, here's where they're gonna write down each day what they have done, um, what the subject is, and they can even write in their notes. And so something like this is a permanent record and it works well for your transcripts that you'll eventually end up developing if your child is going to go to any kind of um, college, um, but as well as just for records for yourself, for memorabilia. Now, resources online for you to check out. Check out theoldschoolhouse.com and look up their articles about unschooling. Check out HSLDA, Homeschool Legal Defense Association. You can look there and they've got a lot of um, articles and then they can also let you know what is the legal ramifications for your particular state that you live in. Um, check out johnholtgws.com. Um, he has a lot on his site about home unschooling. And um, kathyduffyreviews.com, she's got uh, good uh, reviews of many more sources for you. So there are different homeschool teaching styles. All right, there's everything from traditional to Charlotte Mason to classical to unschooling, and they're all good. Okay, so you're going to choose based on how you were raised, your personality, your current lifestyle, and most of all, the goal that you and your family has for your children. So your teaching method can change as you go on this homeschool journey. So you can be very eclectic and try lots of different things like I did, or you can just settle on one and do it the whole way. And it's all good. All right, do your research, talk to others, ask questions. Don't be shy about this. All right, and give it a try and see if it's what works best for your family. So. What questions do you have? Um, or what advice or tips do you have if you've already experienced and done homeschooling or you are currently unschooling um, or the relaxed method or anything in between? I hope that this was helpful. Um, be sure to check out Mardell.com. Um, check out our blog articles. Um, also go to our Facebook and YouTube for other videos. Um, and as always, you can order any of this or other curriculum and things in our stores and online as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day and enjoy your homeschool life.